I'm Levi, and I'm building a 3D printer of my own design. I've just finished making all the individual pieces that I will need to make this machine, which means that now I'm ready for the most exciting step, which is assembly. This day has been about a month in the making, and I am itching to get started. I've got the design pulled up here for reference, all the parts I need to make it over here, and the whole day to spend working on it. Without further ado, let's get started. So I've started assembling this top part here, and the plan was to have one motor for the x-axis and one motor for the y-axis, and the, the idea works fine. This works great. But the problem is, just one motor isn't gonna work. If I just push and pull over here, there's no movement. The problem is there's just way too much slop in these bearings. So to solve that, I got these new bearings, they're not only more expensive, but they're much longer than the previous ones. These bearings have a lot tighter tolerances, but I'm not just going to be relying on these. I'm also planning on putting another motor on each of the axes. So this printer in total will have two motors for the X, two motors for the Y, and two motors for the Z. That way both sides of the mechanism will be actuated simultaneously, and there will be no concern about the slop in the system. I installed new bearings on all of these 3D printed pieces. As you can see, they're much longer and they stick out of the actual block. I also reprinted these end pieces so that they have these tongues on them so that they can be belt driven. However, I don't think I'm gonna need it. I was thinking that I would need two additional motors so that the X and Y gantries could be actuated on both sides simultaneously. However, with these new longer bearings, which apparently have a lot tighter tolerances, they only need to be actuated on one side. So now I'm thinking I should be totally fine with just the two motors like I originally intended. However, I did go ahead and make these aluminum brackets. So in the future, if the printer isn't rigid enough or something like that, and I need to add the two additional motors, I will be able to. I was pretty aggressive when I put some of the rods in here and messed up the tolerances, so I ended up just kind of filling them with super glue and hoping that stays. It's definitely not the prettiest joint, but it should work.
All of the motors are now mounted onto the frame. The XY assembly is pretty much complete other than the belts that still need to be attached. Now I need to work on the Z axis, but the, the whole thing's definitely coming together. This thing is really coming together. So far it's looking amazing. I just have the build plate sitting on here right now. When I take that off, the Y axis is kind of flimsy, it has some, some slop in it. But with the weight of the build plate on it, this slop really isn't there at all. These lead screws up here are a little too long. You can see the, the rod hits it, especially when the extruder goes over too far. So the next thing I'll need to do is to cut these a little shorter. The other thing is that these holes for mounting the build plate do not line up with the extrusion. So I can't put a screw directly into the extrusion to fix it onto the machine. I'll need to design a little 3D printed piece to go under it. Something that comes out from the extrusion that the build plate will be able to screw down into. But so far, it's looking super good. I am very happy with how this is turning out. Not to mention the fact that it is massive. Now I need to assemble the hot end here and the extruder with this motor. The bed is now fixed to the frame, and with that, the whole thing is much more rigid than it was before, which is great. I mounted the hot end up here. It's very secure. There's no flex in it whatsoever. I also added this Bowden extruder over here, and then I went ahead and added the spool holder right here. So the filament will be stored on a spool, of course, and then it can go directly into the extruder where it'll go through this tube down into the hot end to be 3D printed. Now all that I have left to do is add the belts along the Y axis and the Z axis. The X and Y belts are now in place. There's still a little bit of play at the non-actuated ends of these bars, which may be a problem in the future, but most likely won't be much of a consideration. So there's a chance that I will have to come back and add two extra motors, another for the X, another for the Y. But I'm not going to worry about that for now. I'd like to just get this working first. And with that, the assembly for my custom 3D printer is complete. I'm really happy with how the machine's turning out. So far, it looks incredible. It's massive. It seems way bigger than I thought it would, and I can't wait to see it actually work. Again, there is that potential problem with the unactuated sides of the X and Y axis bars, but that can always be fixed, so I'm not too concerned about it. At the end of the day, I am satisfied with what I have been able to accomplish, and very soon I will have this thing working. So if you'd like to see this giant machine actually do some 3D printing, then stay tuned. But that's all I have for now, so bye.